All right, folks. So while everybody's joining, I'm going to give my my usual housekeeping opening items. Welcome everybody to this call. This is a this is a friendly AMA between uh, you guys and our uh, developer relations team, so that uh, you can find out about anything related to development. Maybe you're you're eyeing to build something, uh, incorporating them, or maybe maybe you just have some more development focused questions that that are um, um, like outside the bounds of the, of our regular community calls. So this was basically just set up for that, and. Uh, Please, just as usual, uh, the, the call is being recorded, so it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel as usual. And if you have any questions, uh, you may find the community call text channel, uh, two, two channels above this one, which you're currently on, uh, and just leave them there. I'm keeping an eye on that channel, and I'm going to be asking our, um, our, DevRel, our DevRel team those questions. And also, the three best, best questions get um, a NIM Christmas t-shirt, I believe. That's the, um, that's the incentive for you guys. And with that, I'll hand over to, uh, to Max, Joe, and Ali, the, our, our three-person uh, developer relations wonder team. Take it away, boys. Thanks, dude. Um, yeah, I think we'll just, uh, let's, we'll do a little, um, I'll do, we'll do maybe a little overview of, uh, of DevRel uh, after we, I suppose, yeah, all just introduce ourselves. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. And Max, uh, as you might have heard, I also have a slightly sore throat. Um, so apologies if I'm a bit raspy on the call. And uh, yeah, I, um, I, you've all, I've been on community calls before. You, I've done Shipyard Academy lectures. And um, yeah, basically, um, running DevRel with Joe and Ollie is uh, my role. And uh, I've been at NIM for almost two years at this point, I think, which is crazy. Time, time flies. And I'll pass over to Ollie to do a little intro of himself. Yeah, go for it. Uh, thanks for that. Um, yeah, so I've just recently joined, uh, not too recent actually, I've been here for two months now. So I'm currently working as DevRel, uh, working alongside with Max and Joe. Um, but yeah, um, oh, you have been in the community call um, about two months ago. But yeah, I have a very software development background and it's very nice to you know, easily say that um, fitting into him pretty well, say so. Um, but yeah, um, that's uh, enough about me. I'll pass on to Joe, actually. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, hey guys, how's it going? Um, I'm Joe, UK based. Uh, and I've also been in the company for a little around, um, I think, just my second month now. Um, so, like, when it comes to the NIM stuff, I mean, I've not been on a call before or anything. I mean, uh, this is kind of like the first time I'm getting onto this stuff, which is great. Um, so see you guys, whatever, in the channel and stuff. And then um, what I basically do on the DevRel team is uh, I try to get what we've got on NIM at the moment and um, try and architecture the NIM stuff into building um, uh, custom apps, right? So using the NIM technology and uh, integrating it into a stack to then build applications uh, from it. So when it comes to all the dev stuff, I yeah, I love talking about that stuff and uh, just trying to build some cool stuff, I guess. Okay, cool. So um, are we going straight into questions or what's the crack with that? No, no I, I think... I, I, I th but, uh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Max. Um, oh, yeah. So it's all right, dude. So, um, yeah, kind of as, as Joe and Ali mentioned, then, you know, they both joined quite recently until, until then it was um, kind of me running DevRel on my own for a little bit. And one of the things... That, that means for everyone is that um yeah the role of devrel or like the amount of stuff that we can basically do <clears throat> is kind of expanding quite a lot now and the thing that joe touched upon then which was um you know starting to build like uh starting to build example apps of like uh joe's gonna be joe's mostly gonna be focusing on typescript and then in the future i'll probably be doing some rusty kind of bits myself but basically yeah like one of the things that we're focusing on at the moment is tutorials and how to you know build service providers how to start using the um the clients that obviously is like the main focus of this call so um yeah expect a lot more of that um in the new year basically alongside you know the everything else that we do like the docs uh ollie's been doing fantastic videos for shabby academy and uh obviously talks and hackathons as well All right, folks, 
if that's uh, if that's the, the uh, if that concludes the intro of the DevRel team, I think we should maybe maybe move on to a uh, to a general overview of um, uh, of our clients that we want to talk about today. Cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, anyone who has been wanting to um, develop with them uh, for a while, then you know, I'm sure you already know the clients. Anyone who's been using Nim Connect, which hopefully all of you have been, has also been using one of our clients, the Sox Five client. Um, and yeah, there was a blog post that we put out the other day, which was basically looking at the the different types of clients that Nim has. And um, you may you may kind of be wondering why why bother even having you know why why have multiple types of clients? Doesn't that make it more complicated? The reason that we have multiple clients is because they're all suited for different um, code environments, basically. But they all roughly do the same thing, which we can um, yeah maybe jump into a little bit later. But we basically have um, we have three clients. We have the Sox Five client. This is the client that everyone is using when they're using Dim Connect to basically proxy um, Sox Five traffic or now Sox Four or Sox Four A traffic from like existing apps. So you know, hooking up Keybase, hooking up Telegram, hooking up a crypto wallet, um, and then proxying that through the Mixnet. Uh, we have the WebSocket client, which is uh, the one that's got the least love uh, of, uh, over the last couple of months, but this is uh, what Joe's really good first tutorial was uh, looking at, how you can set up a pair of WebSocket clients and uh, create some application code that means they can talk to each other through the Mixnet. Um, and then the one that I think has maybe had the most impact in the last couple of weeks is the uh, WebAssembly client which um, is essentially a client that compiles down to WebAssembly. So you can use it uh, in any WebAssembly runtime environment. So you can use it in browsers, really, which is really, really cool. Now you can start you know, building um, apps that natively talk to the Mixnet from a browser, which is wild. Uh, or you could also use it in edge computing or you know, Electrum apps, stuff like this. And that has been that's packaged now through our SDK, which so any TypeScript or JavaScript developers can just like import that like they would as a normal library. And um, yeah, we might also have a, we're hopefully going to have a Rust SDK in the future as well for uh, Rust heads amongst you. Uh, Joe, Ollie, do you have anything to add there? I realized that was a little bit of a rambling overview of the three clients that we have. No, that was great. Um, that was a good overview of what we have under our belts. Um, one thing that you kind of mentioned about was the Sox, uh, Sox 5 client, the Sox 4A client. So um, that's an interesting thing, actually, that we kind of opened up to allowing people to use the Sox 4. I kind of want to have a discussion about that just a bit, but obviously, do we want to wait for the questions or do we want to, you know, just talk about this stuff? Um, I don't know, just go, 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 go ahead, talk about it. It's a very interesting topic. Hello, Ali. I think you're muted. Yeah, Ali, where did you go? You've, uh, if you were going to start talking about, it, you've disappeared. All right, we seem to have lost Ali, or at least I have on my end. Um, yeah, yeah, me too, me too. Do you, do you want to riff on? Um, uh, yeah, I think Sox Four. So I'll, I'll explain a little bit of the Sox Four, and then I'd also like to pass it over to Joe as well to. Um, so he could maybe give give everyone a bit of a rundown of what he built last week because uh, it's really cool. But um, yeah, just as a, as a quick. Oh, actually, I'll also do one other quick update. Um, so the release that's currently cooking, um, 1.1.4, has um, one of the really cool things that we now have for the clients is uh, multi serps, right? So um, just so everyone is on the same page. Then SERBs, our single use reply box, are basically ways that like if I sent a message to a service provider that like say sudo was using or Joe was using or uh, running, right? Um, obviously, I don't want to have to tell that service provider my address to send me a reply, right? So um, we had something called single use reply box, SERBs, which basically allowed um, for you to send one packet back through the mixnet. Right, which usually you know is okay. You can get like an acknowledgement that maybe the message I sent to Sudo's service provider, which then you know was passing a cryptocurrency transaction or something, right? Um, it could say, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I sent it, 
but obviously it's still quite limiting. Um, we want to be able to build services where you can send a request and you can get files through the mixnet. And that's what multi serbs allows us to do now. So basically, um, we don't have this limit. So responses can now be an arbitrary size. So it means that you can now send uh, images and files and everything like that anonymously as replies to the mixnet. The reason this comes up more as well is because um, with the SOX5 client, and this is documented, uh, with the SOX5 client, if you want to be using this, then um, you have to make sure that you're using an up-to-date network requester. Obviously, over time, everyone will update, but just as a heads up um, about that. But yeah, when we're waiting for Ollie to get back in, uh, I'd like to pass over to you, Joe, if you want to uh, yeah, give I'm everyone a bit of an sorry. explanation about your tutorial. I'm... Yeah, sorry, I just DC'd there, but yeah, um, I caught you. Uh, just as you began to explain a bit more about it. But yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for the breakdown. I hope that was very informative to everyone. Cool. Uh, let's pass the chair then. Cool, cool. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, yeah, guys. Um, so basically, what we've kind of come up with in the past couple of two weeks is a well, new tutorial. Um, the tutorial is a kind of step by step, uh, do this, do that instructions kind of style of um, tutorial. So it's you know split up into chunks, easy to follow, and it's basically uh, a TypeScript. Or, well, JavaScript TypeScript tutorial of um, creating a user client which will send messages over the mixnet to a service provider, generic service provider. Um, and uh, it's just saying, it, it's just a tutorial saying using the mixnet to get a message from client A to client B, right? Uh, and how it works is we have our user client with a uh, TypeScript, uh, sorry, a NIM client, the NIM WebSocket client attached to that, that will send a message to the service provider who also has a uh, NIM WebSocket uh, client. And that will then um, just produce a message that says, okay, yeah, we've, we've received the message. Um, I'll try and get that link to you uh, at some point in the call, um, wh wherever it can be broadcasted. Um, but yeah, essentially, you know, we're at the stage where we're actually getting some uh, base code down um, for a quick setup to build stuff um, that uses uh, the mixnet messaging. Uh, right now, it's obviously quite bare bones. We're trying to start from the most basic example and then, uh, tr tr you know, getting into more complex exam examples, more complex functionality. But I think we've got a good starter here. Um, so yeah, I'll try and get that link to you. Uh, don't worry if you guys uh, don't really use uh, TypeScript. It is more of a it's more of a um, a front end uh, tutorial as opposed to um, like Max was saying earlier regarding you know Rust stuff. Um, so if you guys like building screens and building apps, definitely um, jump on it, give it a try. Um, but yeah, like we've we're, we're just building things now so um, we can get the ball rolling and. Uh, yeah, have some fun with creating some cool apps that use the Mixnet. Um, yeah. Do you want to give them a sneak peek of the one that you're currently working on as well? It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, so at the moment, uh, I'm working on a uh, again. It's it's going to be a client and a service provider, just like the one I explained. However, in this tutorial, is going we're going to try and get um, IPFS into Planetary Filing System. Um, wow, dope on that on that service provider, right? So um, we will send a message over the mixnet from our from our client. That's going to be charged with the mixnet, have all the privacy benefits and all that stuff, right? Says it to the service provider. That service provider will receive the message, and in that message, we'll you know have our file that we want to upload onto IPFS, and then we'll also have the option to uh, get files from that um, same IPFS. Uh, place the node as as you would call it in the ipfs terms a node and um so yeah we're going to try and get files file systems up and running with the uh, with the mixnet technology hopefully and that's what we're currently working on um i'm going to try and make it uh i mean doing the first tutorial i kind of learned a few two one or two things about writing tutorials um making sure like i keep to sim you know 
simple English terms as much as possible. But uh, yeah, it's gonna it, it'll it'll be a work in progress. But that's what's coming out next. And then, um, guys, I don't know how this is gonna be set up, but if there's anything like where uh, things need to be more clear on the tutorial, for example, um, we'll open it up a channel for that. Let me know what I need to do or clear up, and um, yeah, that that should be good. I just want to make sure everything is. Uh, I mean, my 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 philosophy on this is kind of making sure that when we want to build things, uh, things will be set up in an easy way, and we don't have to, you know, think or solve or go take too many detours in the whole setup process of um, initializing a project to, uh, you know, build cool applications on top of right. That's what I would. That's what I have to say about that. Don't know if you want to add anything, um, Max. Yeah, go, yeah, go for it. I think it's I think it's great what you're doing. I think it's great that you put together tutorials. It's building scenarios for the dev community. Um, it's an easy like um, invitation into what we do as NIM. So, like you said, with the simple service provider that I've just recently linked in the chat. I'll probably link again. Um, it's great what you put together. Um, it's in our documentation. I'm going to be building some videos as well. Get together some videos so. You know, there's a couple of reader learners out there, but there's also some visual learners too. So it's kind of a step by step um, learning together experience. And hopefully, we'll build a portal just dedicated to our developers uh, with loads of cool um, tutorials built by Joe. Pretty awesome. Actually, uh, the, uh, the IPF, uh, IPFS integration, uh, I, I didn't even know about. That's, that sounds absolutely awesome, guys. Um, Awesome to hear. Oh, and also, guys, just just um, um, if you if you have any feedback for for the DevRel team, maybe maybe with the uh, with the um, or regarding the uh, the tutorials that Joe just mentioned or anything else, I created a, a taggable um, a taggable role. Anybody can tag it. The DevRel role. So if you have any feedback, maybe for Joe with his tutorials or or whatever, you can just tag the DevRel team on the server and um, uh, and they will be notified about it. Sorry, guys. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, I don't. I, I, you didn't cut us off with anything. I think, um, yeah, I think unless there's any questions that we have, like about DevRel more generally that we've already collected, then I think we could um, let's start moving on to some of these questions. Oh, we have a bunch of questions, but they are not all Dev or DevRel focused. So should I just go? Uh, should I just go um, um, in? in the order of appearance and then and then you decide whether whether it's it's a question for you yeah, or let's not. just then, let's roll with it it's all interconnected anyway isn't it you know so let's just... yeah 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 yeah, definitely all right so uh, the first question was uh, what the difference is between serbs and multi serbs but i think you answered that in in depth max so um so we can move on to the next one so um uh, how do you protect the network from coordinated coordinated attacks on mixed nodes or gateways all ips are are open to the public uh, how can we make it more secure as mixed node runners? So, um, there's a couple, well, I mean, okay, so there's a, there's a couple of things, right? And um, this, it's funny that this, you bring this up because uh, this is a... Uh, you, you definitely unmuted yourself, Max. Or maybe, maybe we lost you? Oh yeah, we lost Mac. Max. Yeah, I think he's gonna rejoin. Lost. Yeah, give him a sec. <laughs> he's been having some issues today with uh, comms. <laughs> uh, you guys want to refund this until he's back? Oh, he's back. He's back. Hey, hey Max, welcome back. Hey, sorry. I was uh, I was checking the checking the questions in another tab, and then uh, obviously <laughs> Discord freaked out. Um, <laughs> sorry, where did I get? Yeah. So basically, this is actually a. Um, this is a question that we see a lot. A lot of people see this warning on a gateway, which is that the uh, the WebSocket connection header wasn't set properly, right? And a lot of people ask me about this. What that actually most likely is, is actually probably something just like scanning your ports and trying to connect to it. But because you don't, um, because whatever is scanning you doesn't give the very specific kind of like uh, update header for the WebSocket connection, then it doesn't go through right um which is kind of just an interesting thing so you can we passively have also shown that gateways can just show when someone's scanning all of your ports which is quite funny and it happens on the internet a lot if you you know run 
a VPS and look at the logs of <laughs> what random things have tried to connect to you. Um, in terms of like the more general thing, then if I mean your mix nodes, right? Your mix nodes are only going to accept stuff from gateways. So anyone who tries to spam the network from a anyone who tries to spam the network by just sending like loads and loads and loads of traffic through it. Um, at the moment, yeah, that's not hugely protected against. But um, that's because we the mixnet is uh, still free to use, or you know, there's like this. Um, we don't have the kind of pay to use functionality um, integrated in there yet, right? So once that's there, they um, then there's a kind of an economic disincentive for people to try and spam attack, uh, much in the same way. And for the same reason that stuff like blockchains has gas, um, you're paying for the spam that you're sending. In terms of like general kind of distributed denial of service attack prevention, then um, I think so long there's nothing necessarily too special to the mixnet for that. You know, uh, I think just the standard rules of um, standard rules of stuff like proper firewalling and you know just like proper server management server kind of maintenance is there. Uh, especially for mixed nodes. Um, for gateways, then, you know, if a situation kind of arises where gateways suddenly start getting hammered, then you could, you know, we could totally look at something like a kind of a sentry model or something like this. But for the moment, this is not, um, this has not been necessary to kind of focus on quite yet. Apologies if it's a noob question, but um, what's a sentry model? Oh, so like a sentry model is like, um, this is a model that you see like along blockchains. Uh, but you can also see, you also see it with like load balancing, right? Which is basically where you have a you have a server that's doing the thing, right? In this instance, it's a gateway, which is like authenticating and then passing on a message, but it could be literally anything. Um, and then you basically just have you have a that's not the that's not the node that you're actually is being directly pinged, right? You kind of set up a a node in front of it that you actually do ping. So say if you want to, you know, you want to send a request to uh, sudo.dimtech.net, right? Um, you're not actually sending it to that machine, you're sending it to a kind of a machine in front that's a sentry, so to speak, uh, which means that if that node starts getting hammered with like random crap, um, your actual machine that's doing the important work of like passing on messages to the mixnet is not actually getting kind of nailed by that, you know? I see. That yeah. All right, I think let's move on to the next question. Um, what are projects you would personally like to see use NIM? What are the projects that use uh, th that just received the grant? These are two questions, actually, in one. All right, cool. Um, uh, in terms of like projects I would like to see, I think this is actually, we can pass this around, all three of us, I think, actually, before we... Yeah, please. So actually, please. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, I'll, um, maybe what I'll do with this, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly go over like who we gave grants out to, and then... Mm, well, we can pass around like what kind of projects we'd like to see on them as well, because obviously it's so gen it's uh, so generic in a certain sense that um, yeah, obviously everyone has different kind of main things they'd like to see, right? But for the dev grants, um, so we gave out five of the uh, Vinga grants, which are um, kind of our name for a nano grant, but they're called Vinga grants. That's what we're going to call them, um, and we gave it out to uh, one to Darkfy who are a really great project who are basically uh, working on zero knowledge proof stuff, but also like uh, on peer to peer uh, technologies as well. So they're very much taking like this kind of like holistic uh, full stack approach to private, like privacy and anonymity stuff, uh, especially anonymity tech. Um, we also have Meridian project who is a community member who I've chatted to a bit, who's going to be working on a chat. There is um, Dial Out as well, who previously um, also had a grant with NIM, looking at um, setting gateways up on uh, stuff like routers, so basically kind of like cross-compiling uh, binaries for different hardware setting, uh, hardware environments. And um, the community staple, No Trust Verify, uh, also got a grant. Uh, to continue their work on PaceNim, which is really great. And then there is also a project which 
uh, is run by uh, another community member, Liam, which he is going to be looking at doing IoT uh, over the next now, which is all very exciting. Uh, with regards to the kind of stuff that I would like to see using the MixNet, then um, my main focus for this um, is going to be um, stuff like email, but then also stuff like P2P um, apps. So I'm particularly interested in, yeah, um, seeing how you can do, how you can integrate completely P2P uh, applications into the MixNet. So then you could kind of have traffic never, you know, leave, so to speak. Um, but that said, I am also, I was previously a smart contract developer. I still do a bit of smart contract development. So obviously, um, hooking up, uh, being able to interact with blockchains, but using them as a transport layer is also like very interesting to me. On to you, Ollie. What would you like to see uh, NIM integrated in? Um, I've got to jump on Max's back on this one. I think the email service provider thing is pretty cool. Um, when I saw that come through as an application for submission, I was like, you know, I'm new to the, the whole, um, you know, crypto space with the whole blockchains and stuff. So when I got my first introduction into NIM and how you can secure NIM and make sure you have a bit of privacy when you're communicating from uh, one client to another, um, I thought about the whole email thing because I've been in previous world where email has been the main basis of communication. Um, so I'm very intrigued to find out how, that's, um, how that project's gonna go, um, what it entails, what support we can give to it as well. Uh, but yeah, really ready to get embedded into it. What about you, Joe? Cool. Yeah, do, do you know what? I think there's so many cool things, to be honest, that you could, I mean, to be built in general and whatever kind of NIM can kind of, kind of like help utilize in that process is, is going to be. But I mean, to be fair, like there is so many things you can build um, in terms of like you know, communication and stuff with this uh, using the MixNet as a, um, as a uh, vehicle for, that, for data or messages, so to speak. So it's a bit tricky, but obviously Max has mentioned a load of good ones there. I think the main thing is that with when it comes to the MIGNET, I think any, because I did actually pose this question to Dave once as well, I think it's whatever application that uses the MIGNET to transfer uh, sensitive, you know, or personal metadata where required, um, if it's able to pass through the MIGNET, and it's able to keep that data safe from, you know, prying eyes, so to speak. I think that is, a, you know, that's a success, right? Like we've, we've accomplished like the use. I mean, one of the primary uses that we intended for the technology. And I would say any, any of that, any instance of that is a, is a win in my book, I'd say. So I think it's just to do with the mission, right? Like staying with um staying with making sure like user data is safe yeah that's well said i will also quickly add my thoughts to this one because um um because i would also like to see nim integrated in quite a few things i think for me anything communication especially i am like uh, instant messaging would be would be absolutely great that's one of the use cases that everybody on the world in, in the world is using and um and that is really susceptible to to uh to metadata surveillance so so nim um has a, has a huge role there also, I'm I'm hoping, hoping, hoping all my fingers are are crossed for, for an IPFS integration at some point. That would be uh that would, like a meaningful one, um, uh, and a robust one. That would be absolutely great. So the the combination of these two technologies would be a really powerful powerful tool. And uh, we've recently started talking to um uh, just informally to um uh, to the Freedom of the Press Foundation. They have a tool called. Um, uh, called Secure Drop, which is which is basically a tool which is used for for sources to safely drop content uh, and leaks to uh, to journalists, and um, this is also um, also a cause that that I I, I find very important. And um, you know th this sort of thing brought us uh, brought us the Snowden, Snowden revelations uh, and many others, which actually changed the world. So when it comes to me, I would see uh, I would like to see um, 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 something. Something similar to that, but using the NIM mixnet to to further to further protect uh, um, the uh, the safety of um, of sources. I find that very important. 
All right, yeah, folks, on that note, oh, so, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Example. No, I was just going to say, I think, I think what you're talking about it literally is the, the example, but like what I was talking about, like safety in those, in those critical scenarios, right? Yeah, yeah, very much so. It's, it's one of the, um, uh, one of the, um, um, the most important things that NIM, NIM, NIM can be used for. So th there's a big risk in, in, um, um, in leaking stuff. I think this year the the number of journalists killed went up by almost fifty percent. So um, uh, so that's also like a stat to keep in mind. It's it's not a safe job, and and we have to do everything in our power to uh, to protect them. All right, folks, let's move on to the next question. On that note, um, what is the best starting point for someone who wants to uh, uh, to start developing on NIM? Uh, Joe's tutorial, hundred <laughs> um, percent. That's pretty yeah. much it. <laughs> yeah. Shameless um, plug. Of course, man. That's the point. I mean, so, um, yeah, you know, this is uh, definitely Joe's tutorial for sure. Um, that said, we also have uh, on the SDK page, uh, the SDK page has it has a little bit of example code, but it's, um, you know, we, we Joe's next uh, tutorial is going to also be using the SDK in the front end. Uh, that said, there's also, you know, some great community projects that are using our stuff already um and uh pace nim is also a good one to look at for sure uh if you're wanting to get into that kind of development uh if you're wanting to kind of develop from you know from like a browser-based app if you want to um the very cool thing about a websocket client which um which is kind of uh the, sorry completely lost my train of thought there the very cool thing about a websocket client is that so long as you write an app that can um, basically set up and connect to a WebSocket connection, which is like basically any language you would be writing an application in, uh, you can use a WebSocket uh, client. So say if you're like a Go developer, but you wanted to uh, rebuild like what Joe built um, in his tutorial, but in Go, because you don't use TypeScript for whatever reason or any other language, uh, then you can like you take that as like a, as a as a um, template and work from that basically. Uh, also, going to shamelessly shill that in the next year, um, a we will also have like a developer portal which is going to be worked on as well. So, you know, um, until quite recently, we were very much to like an infrastructure focused project, and now obviously, we are, you know, DevRel is a three person team now. We want people to start building. Um, the first round of dev grants have gone out, so obviously we want people to start building. And uh, yeah, there'll be a lot more like dev-related content in terms of like how to get mm, get into, I suppose, get into the flow of like working with the mixnet um, from various different types of kind of app situations as well. Yeah. Hopefully that was a thorough answer for you guys. If you if you need any links to uh, to anything that that Max mentioned, then let us know in the community call text channel, and we'll dig it up for you. But let's move on for the uh, for the next uh, to the next question for now. So um, I think this one was answered pretty thoroughly once again. So the question was, um, um, what does DevRel mean, and what's your job as one? Um, can you maybe quickly summarize this one just as a as a, as a quick round? Uh, maybe Joe. My apologies. Oh. My apologies. I was just trying to find the link to uh, put in that um, community call channel. I think. I know it's fine, man. Yeah, trust me. I've done the uh, research on the kind of the dev ro dev rel role before, but essentially, I would best summarize it as, and I'm sure there'd be people that would kind of like want to add on in, on on my interpretation. But I, the the best kind of way I would say it is kind of like. Um, uh, It's, uh, like I'd say overall, just engineering help and consulting, but not consulting in the traditional sense. It's kind of like integ assist, like the assistance of integrators, assisting integrators, kind of thing. I'm probably just butchering it to be honest. <laughs> no, it's cool. It's cool. Like, there's so many interpretations of it. Um, Suda, I remember on our community community call when I was first week when I joined, um, developer evangelism. And I talked about how, like, you know, 
Pirate the phrase. Sound. Yeah. <laughs> I talked about how biased that sounds. Like, um, probably just building off what Joe said, it's like, it's a very pivotal role. Um, there's a bit of marketing in there, there's a bit of growth. Um, there's also a bit of engineering too. So you're learning from a trifecta of like, uh, like different avenues of things. Um, and you're bringing that knowledge into the dev community. Uh, hence why the relations part is in that title too. Um, but yeah, um, that's my interpretation of it. What do you, what do you think, Max? You've uh, got the ears on me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, um, I mean, it's a bit of everything really, isn't it? I think the, um, the question that we answered before, like how best is it to get into this as a dev, right? That's kind of like the question that, that's like the main question that you're kind of always answering, right? Which is like, um, you're always and you're always trying to basically say like kind of you're trying to present you present the documentation. Obviously, like we write docu te technical docs. That's like the kind of you know one of the bread and butter bits of this job, right? That everything is kind of documented. But obviously, especially with something like NIM, then uh, just because something is documented doesn't mean it's then easy to um, like approach. You know, as a developer, you've just come across this tech. How do you start playing around with it? And uh, you know, there's lots of different ways that people start playing with a either new libraries or like a new piece of tech or whatever uh, in order to start building on it. So we have to kind of like present that in loads of different ways. And I think a lot of our work is doing that. So, you know, you mentioned before that uh, you're going to do some video overviews of Joe's tutorials because some people learn better from videos than they do from tutorials. Um, mm -hmm. We do talks, we do workshops, we do all of this as well. Uh, we build these example apps and um, yeah. So it's, it, but ultimately we're always kind of like, yeah, trying to make it as easy as possible for people to actually like interact with um the tech that you're kind of you know documenting uh, which in our case is nim which is a, a a big quite weird quite complicated uh network of of things so it's like you know how do you present that in the most in a variety of ways all of which are both accessible but also like not lacking depth yeah no i think that's good um i i like how you mentioned about like um, one of the posing questions was like, um, how can I jump into this? How can we jump into NIM and start, um, you know, start playing around with it? And I think that's a ever hovering question above my head. And then that kind of invokes me to like think of, or provokes me to think of like different ways in which we can teach these people or teach the community um, what's what and how to use it. And best explained it, Max, using videos, using documentation, not just leaving out the documentation, but also listening to our community, understanding how can we better the documentation itself. Um, it's, a, it's a great segue into it, but yeah. Good. All right, folks. Um, let's move on to the next question. Um, it is from Nick again. And the question is, how do we plan to drive the mass adoption of, of uh, the NIM clients? Um. Of the NIM clients or of NIM Connect? Um, NIM Connect. Uh, I think, yeah, maybe. But but he he wrote uh, he wrote NIM clients. I think maybe he means NIM clients or yeah. Clarif uh, Nick, if you can clarify on the on the channel, please then then let me know. But until then, all right. Let, let's let's take these. Actually, there's a whole bunch of questions from No Trust Verify, the yeah. the, um, the OG group who who we've already uh, already mentioned. Basically, uh, by the way, almost all the uh, almost all the, uh, the the members of No Trust Verify are here in this call. So, hello guys. So What's they have a bunch guys? of questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna assign all of the, like each of these questions to one of you. Let's start with Ali here. Um, what are you planning to do or can do to improve the overall throughput of the mixnet? If you can pass on, if um, if any question is not your expertise, then you can pass on to to whoever it is the expertise of. Um. I want to say come back to me on that question, actually. I've got something brewing in my mind that I want to say, but I just want to see if there's anything else um, that's very stable Ma we can say. 
Max is all muted. Max, Max wants to say something when it comes to this one. <laughs> yeah, so one of the things that we're looking at is we are... Um, there's, a, there's quite a few things, all of which kind of like cumulatively add up. One is um, looking at using a kind of a more stripped down package format. Um, you know, Sphinx was um, Sphinx was a pre-existing package format that like very much served the purpose of what we needed it for. Um, but there could be some ways that this can be improved. So this is something that's being worked on as well. Uh, that should increase the throughput of the mixnet quite a lot. Um, and that's also kind of quite like a quite an achievable one. Uh, or not, well, they're all achievable, but kind of quite a um, an easier win maybe than some, um, because obviously there's also work that could be there's work that could be going on into you know stuff like hardware acceleration or uh, all of this kind of stuff. But at the moment, then this uh, package format or new package format work um, that would hugely improve the uh, the throughput of the mixnet as well. And um, the size of machines as well. Um, this is something that I kind of have seen with gateways recently. Um, in that uh, the in a weird way you can kind of think about the total speed of the of the network as being like throttled by the gateway that you're sending your packets through um and obviously mix note this is a thing that will change in the future i'm sure because obviously at the moment gateways are not you know really incentivized in the same way that mix nodes are um so yeah we're kind of seeing like mix nodes are being run on these amazing beastie machines um but yeah some of the some of the gateways are maybe a little bit small which totally makes sense but um having good gateways having like solid gateways is a um i think something that we could use to definitely improve the speed of the mixnet for sure not the throughput necessarily i mean improving the throughput is basically like how many cores do all the machines in the path um that you're on that your packets are traveling through or the paths plural that your packets are traveling through have um as well as yeah this new package format hmm. all right so the moving on to the to the next question on the huge list that um that Amado was posted so uh can you please tell us a bit more about the the way coconut credentials uh, could be used and for those of you who don't know coconut credentials are basically the same as zk nims so uh they are the same technology we just uh we just renamed them to uh, zk nims uh joe hello you're muted if you're speaking I think we might have lost Jan. Oh no! Can you guys hear me? There yes. You go. Okay. Yes, yeah, we. Yeah, it was the coconut credential question, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, could be used uh, as a user and dev point of view. No, uh, I think so. Yeah. Yes. One. Well, my bad. No. No problem. No problem. Uh, yeah. So um, the coconut credential use usage i mean the whole thing behind it right the tech behind the coco credential i think is kind of like in a very like elaborate topic um in terms of like how it's kind of built uh from the ground up kind of thing but um in terms of uh a dev i mean user and dev point of view it can it is kind of one of the um i mean from how i'm reading this question i think it is uh it is a kind of a a core um, feature of the mixnet, right? And uh, it's those coconut credentials which kind of, you know, the Russian doll analogy kind of packs it all up into a big encryption shell, if you want to call it that, and then it would send that through the, the mixnet. I mean, from a user and dev point of view, tell us a bit more. I mean, I think, I mean, I think it's basically just trying to create Mixed uh, mix net related uh, technologies. I was just saying that would be my answer. Um, Max? Yeah, I mean, um, the way that coconut credentials could be used is um, the way that they could basically be used is you could imagine using them for uh, a proof of any kind of um, key value pair, right? Um, which is a very technical way of saying just a piece of information uh, such as 
uh, a name and then your name, right? But um, the the key part of what they actually allow you to do is they are called their selective disclosure credentials. So what this means is that um, I could be, for instance, using a coconut credential to prove that I was over a certain age without actually revealing uh, what that age actually was, right? Um, but the um, the person who's verifying it, so maybe uh, an app or something, right, um, is actually able to see that the the proof or kind of like the credential that I show them is actually valid, right? So um, that all sounds very abstract, and at the moment it is quite abstract. Um, but you could also you can imagine using them in a, in kind of maybe a similar way that you would use like a like a like a web token of some kind, right? Uh, it's a bearer token, so you could kind of use it to, uh, you know, instead of using OAuth, you could maybe log into a website with a coconut credential that you have in your browser or something like this. Um, yeah. yeah, it's also nice that it's really randomized as well. Um... So no single token is always going to be like the answer for a login in or something. So it's always going to be different. It's just creates that just broadens more of the privacy and security really of it all. Exactly. What, yeah. So what, what Oli mentioned there, 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 um, there's there's a lot of aspects that these things have, um, which I could fill like twenty minutes on. Um, but one of the main things about them is that they are re-randomizable. So what it basically means is that you could um, you get the to get the credential right um, from the uh, from a validators, and then you re-randomize it. So you just jump like kind of re-jumble up the actual the string of text that you uh, that you present to whatever application that is. And what that means is that you can use the same coconut credential over and over and over and over again if it's something like oh log me into a website. Something like this, right? Mm. Um, but because you re-randomize it, then uh, no one can tell that it's you using the same credential over and over again to log into a website, uh, which obviously means, yeah, you don't leak any um, metadata, basically, on the application level. You don't have this thing where someone could say, oh, well, this, the same credential was logging in uh, you know, every day at five. What could we infer about this? Um, as as the if you were able to watch all of the logins, then you wouldn't know if it was one person using the same coconut credential like a hundred times, or fifty people using theirs twice, or whatever, right? So yeah, I would love for you to have uh, to uh, give us that 20, 20 minute deep dive, but cautious of time, we only have twelve minutes, and we have a whole bunch of questions left. So let's just move on to the next one. Um, would you know when an M client will be available on mobile? I'll be interested to be an alpha or beta tester. Um, there's no hard time on this yet. Um, there's some considerations that you have to look at uh, when you're putting something like this on a mobile. Um, basically, yeah. If you At the moment, if you run a client on a phone and you send a constant stream of cover traffic, then you are going to kill the battery in like an hour. So there's certain design questions that have to go into looking at um, what the security kind of model would be there. Like maybe the, maybe it would have to operate in a maybe it would have to work in a slightly different way or have slightly different behavior um, to run on a phone. But that said, um, we are thinking about mobile. It will come, and uh, yeah, I also am interested to be an alpha and beta tester. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, uh, the, the next question was already answered. So, what's the difference between Serbs and multi Serbs? Um, and the, the, the next one after that was uh, whether any quote unquote brainfuck SDKs are coming soon. Do you mean like the actual language brainfuck? Because that would be <laughs> hilarious. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's a core hackathon project. Um, that could Wait, be is, the there, is there a language called brainfuck? I think brainfuck is the language. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a funny yeah. JavaScript language. Uh, yeah, it's an esoteric programming language from 1993. Um, it's kind of, yeah, it's it's really it's really fun. Like I've seen it before in like hackathon challenges and stuff. You know, building stuff in Brainfuck. Um, I think when we get a Brainfuck SDK, that's when we know that the project is um, mature and working. Mature. Um, yeah, exactly. When, exactly. When we're when we're doing that, should we maybe move on to some questions from like? 
the rest of the community just because i realized like stacking yeah this was stacking, this stacking was the, questions is a bit unfair. this was the yeah this was the last one anyway from from them um so there's there's one from Kronos that I that I don't uh, I don't think I understand. So I'm just gonna reverbit him and ho and hope that you guys understand it. So one point responses are planned on the WebSocket WebSocket client feedback uh, that would um, unambiguously respond to a message sent to the name client. Ah, okay. So you mean like um, kind of proper error handling? Do you mean Kronos? So um, I mean it really depends on like what you're talking about when you're talking about responses, right? Because, like, if you're talking, so if we're talking about, like, okay, I'm sending a packet, that packet has to go through five hops, right? Uh, my gateway, three mix nodes, your gateway, you. Uh, uh, we already have retransmission involved, which basically means if that, like, when I send that packet into a gateway, right, if I don't get an act from the gateway, I w which is called an acknowledgement, um, which basically means, hey, got your packet. It's, it's here, don't worry, right? Uh, then you then I'll resend it. And that's what uh, all of the nodes in that path are going to do as well. So they will, you know, forward a packet on. If they don't get an acknowledgement that that packet has been received, then they will retransmit the packet to make sure it gets there, okay? Um, so in that, if we're talking about that level, then uh, like network level of actually transporting the packet from me to you, that's already there. If you're talking about kind of in the same way that you would get like, a response to like a, like an HTTP request, right? Like a status or something. Then um, this is something that you would probably like. There's uh, some responses have already been worked on, like uh, especially in. But this is very much like having to come from the service itself, I think. So you know we have some more of these like uh, error handling responses basically in the network requester. For instance, like if something fails, um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's quite an interesting question to see what level those responses would be built in, like whether this would be kind of on a an app level or actually built into the client themselves. Um, but that said, I think the clients are going to become a bit more like verbose in terms of um, kind of control messages. Yeah, hope that answers your question. I'm in no position to uh, to say because I didn't even understand the question, but I think I think you did answer it. <laughs> the next one is interesting. Um, so um, uh, first of all, he's apologizing for joining late, which is unacceptable. So after the call, you'll be kicked from the server and uh, also reported to the authorities. But the yeah. question actually we never hope, hope we never see you in here again. It's completely, <laughs> exactly, <out of> completely <laughs> taking the piss, man. Fifteen minutes we, late to an open AMA is unacceptable. Wrong. Unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the the actual question is, um, is there any plan of creating a shared resource regarding DevRel related processes? It would be great to know how to approach certain uh, how to approach a certain question, how to look for information and how to ask for help um, or development requests. Thinking bug reports, dev, dev requests, dev grant applications, GitHub requests, etc. Um, and uh, he's also asking about uh, lean process diagrams and SLAs, etc. SLAs being service level agreements. So like how, how long something takes to, uh, to answer. So probably a proper support process around, um, DevRel. Um, I think I'll jump in on like what thought I have, but then also this is like an open thing as well. Yeah. So, uh, very interested to see what Joe and Ali also have thoughts on. Mm -hmm. Um, so in terms of like a plan of creating like a shared resource, something then yeah uh this will be coming this is something that i'm going to be working on. we're going to be working on like making kind of a developer portal so splitting out you know the kind of the guides the um collections of community projects uh blog posts all of this splitting this out from the docs and keeping the docs as kind of like as evergreen and technical as possible um so something like this will be coming that said this is you know also something that's very like um malleable so any feedback or requests and stuff for that as well is also something that we're very interested in. And um, yeah, I'll pass yeah, it to Arlo. Yeah, go for it. Um, Sir, do you mind just repeating the question one more time? So I know it's uh... yeah. So the so the question it's a long one, so I'm going to just repeat repeat the whole thing again. Yeah. So, um, sorry. Is there any plan of creating a shared resource regarding DevRel related processes? 
would be would be great to know how to approach a certain question, how to look for information, and how to ask for help or development requ uh, requests. Thinking bug reports, dev requests, dev grant applications, GitHub requests, etc. Uh, and uh, and also um, output wise, I'm seeing lean process diagrams with SLAs, um, like service level agreements. What what takes how long basically? Uh, I think I can answer part of that question on that puzzle, it's a joke. Um, but yeah, in terms of, um, I think our blog post that we put out, it, it kind of encourages people to interact with us. But that's that's just an app. that's a method that we have. But we also have the community within Discord, also Telegram too. But um, whenever there's a question that's more directed towards like dev related stuff, Max and I are always here to answer it. Joe is also here too. Um, Perfect examples that would be the grantees, uh, service grantees channel, uh, the channels that we have for the mix nodes, the, uh, the gateways, the validators too. We're constantly seeing some bugs in there. We want to just respond to them as quickly as possible with as much knowledge about the question that you're asking. Um, I think that does answer semi the question. Uh, but Joe, have you got anything you want to add on top of that? Yeah, just a few things. Um, I yeah. think when it, yeah, yeah. I think that so the main when it comes to the regarding the shared resource thing, uh, I think that's kind of in the works at the moment in terms of like we're still trying to feel out where and how like would be the best way to kind of um, di direct those kind of requests and stuff. Right? There's something in the works uh, uh, in place in the works at the moment for that. Um, but I think right now um, we've just been doing pretty well with uh you know using discord and um like also the any other any other any other of the social media channels as well but usually um we're in discord and we're here to kind of like answer questions and stuff and uh, when it comes to um so the second part of the question uh so for, from what i can tell is that uh they might like there's two there's two parts of the dev thing one of the development requests from how I see it is developing new requests for features on, on the NIM platform and the current NIM products that already exist, such as Wallet Connect, uh, you know, the any of the backend stuff or changes, including the CLI, like the NIM CLI as well. There's that development stuff. Um, in, in terms of that, like we're always here to kind of hear what you guys think or want or need. And so we can relay that to um the team, the, the team's um in charge of those things but then also um the other dev section which is kind of more immediate to me for example is uh dev questions relating to how can we build uh applications on the mixnet and stuff so there's that side which in discord can get in contact with us um well message us anytime whatever and then we'll get into contact with there in in the in the related channels and then usually, for example, I like to evolve in like knowing what people are building. And like, I like to have a good chat about, you know, what their vision is and what they wanted to create with this stuff. And so, um, guys, if you ever like, you know, think uh, you might need some help or just want some like pointers or if you even want, I guess, assistance with like that, those kind of tasks, building on the mixed net on your own apps. Um, just let me know because I'm interested anyway and um, hopefully I can help. Uh, and in terms of like the dev ground applications and GitHub requests, I think that's that would be the same. Just ask just ask any of any of us to see what the situation with that is on uh, on Discord. So to to, um, to qualify the question a bit, uh, Hoxian added that um, regarding processes, so think about them as enablers for scaling. This is currently very limited. Uh, this is currently a very limited commu uh, community in terms of how how many devs might uh, be working on them related dev uh, in a year from now. So I'll also chime in on this because Huxian asked me to, and also I have some input when it comes to this. But for that, we need to zoom out. So it's not only a DevRel related question, but it's also very much um, 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 like a timely question for the project in general. So we've been, you know, we've we've come together with. Um, uh, with the developers, uh, developers of this of this project, and also the the exec team, and started building stuff, right? And when that happens, uh, when you build something, then then you expose it to to a whole bunch of people, and then and then 
you're in a situation where you need to gather information from those people efficiently and get that information to the right people. This is, um, I mean, within the company. So this is not an easy job. It requires both external and internal processes, which we've already started working on. So one of our in, uh, our initial attempts was um, uh, was the bug reporting process. I was also involved in that. Um, and also the other very focused uh, effort when it comes to this was was tripling the size of our of our DevRel team because, you know, Max is great and it would be very hard to replace him, but you know, he's one guy uh, with only 24 hours a day. So um, so now we have tripled the resources with these two other amazing gentlemen. So that's also very much part of this uh, this concentrated effort on our part to, you know, we've built something and now is the phase to uh, to actually um, like release that thing to to the public, you know, and that, 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 that's both for devs and also users and a whole bunch of people are, are being exposed. Uh, nice and slow for now. Nice and slow to our uh, to our products and and tech and and um, um, and um, and our software, right? So so this is very much a work in progress. And uh, I believe when it comes to the to the uh, to the scaling, obviously we will have to we will have to do more more work on this. But but it is very much in progress. That's all I can say for now. Yeah, I think um, one thing that I wrote I wrote in I wrote as well in the um in the chat but uh yeah i mean if we're talking just about like this kind of shared this you know shared developer stuff then um obviously it's open source prs always welcome like um always happy to kind of look at and accept community input right um so yeah much like the docs you know there's some people who uh, are always putting in little prs in the docs and wanting new stuff and adding new things themselves and that's always great and um you know uh this is no different um in terms of the yeah kind of like processes and enabling for scaling then that's like a more long-term question for sure um it is something that we're kind of thinking of, uh, thinking about but um, it's yeah. The, the, this is a more a more long term thing, absolutely. And um, looking at ways that we can like involve the community in that is also a big thing that we want to do too. Very much so, and it's going to be an important focus of um, uh, of next year. It's not an easy job, guys. By the way, just so you know, it's uh, it's 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 pretty complicated stuff, but it's absolutely crucial for any project. So we're working heavily on that. Um, if you have any follow up questions to that, Hoxian, let us know, and I'm gonna move on to the next one. Um, yeah, here it is. So it's from Nodump Node, a good friend of ours. Is there a way to put a proxy server in front of my Mixnode gateway? I believe this is in um, uh, this is a follow up to the uh, to the DDoS question from earlier. Uh, I mean, yeah, for sure, totally. I mean, you know, your your Mixnode is just a process that's listening on a port, right? It's the same as um, same as other basically any other processes. Um, you, I feel like uh, CGI been actually like also referenced in here as well in the, in the chat um, that you, you know, I think, I think uh, before we start talking about kind of proxies and stuff, just look into, you know, proper firewalling um, techniques and stuff like this. Um, but yeah, a mix node is no, it's no different from other processes that you want to protect in the same, you know, in in um, in the sense that it's just a process running on a server that's listening on a particular port, right? So you just got to protect that port in ways that are pretty. Um, there's a, there's a lot of info on, and um, yeah, I can see that CGI as ever uh, is. Um, I almost doxed you there, mate. Sorry, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> as ever, is being super useful, super helpful. And yeah, ping me in the Mixed Notes channel if you want to talk about that more, and I can send you resources and stuff. All right, on to the next one. Um, are you guys fine staying over about 10 more minutes? I, I can't stay longer because um, because um, we'll okay. have the, the Shipyard Academy graduation ceremony, this very prestigious event that I'm preparing for. What about you boys, Ollie, Joe? Yeah, that's cool. We can stay. Yeah. Alrighty. Yep. Let's go then. Okay. So if you have a, uh, if you'd have a Christmas wish list, what would you love to see developed from the Dev community, uh, the Dev community members, and what are the top top three things? I'm talking too much. I'm going to pass this to you guys first. 
Sure thing. Uh, I'd say top three things. Um, something related to chat. Uh, something related to uh, working with crypto, so the cryptocurrency stuff. And then the other one would probably be along the lines of what we were talking about earlier. So, for example, like a journalism uh, safety um, tip thing, right? So it's as, as, like a way of safely um, transferring lead sources information to another uh, point safely using mixed net technology. That would be my three. Right, but I was going to put the crypto thing at the top because I'm a bit of a finance boy too. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think something with crypto, um, cryptocurrency, especially with the trading platforms that we use as well. Um, I do want to see something. I did mention it before, but I'm very intrigued to find out what you could do with the emails um, comes of that. Um, and more branching off from that, in terms of like the email or service providers, I want to see like <laughs> I'm very intrigued to find out like which providers or like which um like if it's Gmail, if it's Proton, if it's like I don't know, AOL, like which one will be the most difficult one to kind of like you know set up um set it up basically. Uh I'll put that number two. Gosh, number three. <laughs> I think I'm stumped there. I think I'll leave it at two. My Christmas, my Christmas wishes. Uh, wish list is not too long. <laughs> Maybe next year. Next year. I think I already, kind of, I already kind of mentioned um, P2P stuff, which, uh, you know, people are already working on, but there's obviously like a variety of different um, peer-to-peer, you know, protocols that would be amazing to see them uh, starting to get integrated. So something like PubSub, um, which is used by Scuttlebutt, uh, Secure Scuttlebutt, sorry, um, or, you know, something like Kutch. Um, and, yeah, one of the things I'd like to see as well is, like, how, uh, I suppose, kind of, like, how generic we can also make these 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 integrations as well. So, like, um, once there's a, maybe a couple of services that people have built being able to also look at like okay cool like what is what's what's shared and what's unique uh, between these things is also going to be quite interesting to see i think um mm, yeah yeah but um yeah those are my kind of things yeah p2p uh p2p protocols and um also yeah stuff like monero zcash the fun stuff yeah my, I, I can't say three, I already said a few, but but one thing I'm really looking forward to and I would put on my Christmas list is the first smart contracts uh, appearing on the next blockchain uh, that make creative use of um, uh, of coconut creds, uh, aka ZK NIMS, that is going to be absolutely huge. So ZK is all the rage, like zero knowledge in general is all the rage nowadays. But to be honest with you guys, and I'm not flaming anybody, but when you just look around, there there are very very few actually working zero knowledge solutions, even though um, it is it is truly revolutionary technology. So it's a paradigm shift uh, when it comes to when it comes to how how we authenticate ourselves and. Uh, uh, and how much control we have over our, our personal data. So the current paradigm is that we here's this bunch of data, like this whole pile of personal information about me, and through that you know that it's me. And the fact that that this will that this actually uh, in practice is changing when 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 you use ZKNMs, and you can say here's this credential um, um, which which proves that I have access to the service, which proves that I. Um, that I am this or that old, which proves that you know all of those things without without disclosing any personal information. The use cases of that, um, I'm super excited about. So that's actually that's actually probably on top of my Christmas list. And then then there's some some um, not so much applications, but more of more of NIM focused stuff, like anything when it comes to staking. Um, um, maybe maybe stake pools uh, would be would be really great. Um, um, because staking, let's be honest, for for the average normie, NIM staking is kind of complicated. So so there's a huge there's a huge um, um, sort of opportunity there for anybody who wants to, um, um, to 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 step in and be the middleman and and have a good good um, uh, open process of of um, of um, finding nodes to delegate to and 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 um, 
and um, offering that as a staking service to to others who who don't want to look around for mixed nodes, uh, and you know evaluate them and uh, and all of that stuff that I think would uh, that would go a long way and similar developments in general. So just basically improving the um, uh, the stuff that we have with 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 some nice nice added features, um, especially community focused ones. Obviously, since I'm the community guy, those are my. I ended up saying three. Yeah, that's my that's my three. All right, folks. I'm gonna go on to the last question. From what I can tell, wait. Let me just skip through chat real quick because I I I was copying the questions over to a different app. Yeah, I think this is gonna be our last question. So um. This is from Amadeus again from Notre Serify. Um, regarding DevRel, what do you think about allowing experienced and selected community members to write or translate the documentation? This is a good one. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> what do you think, Max? Yeah, I also kind of I responded in the chat too. Like, um, you know, docs are, docs are open. They're open source. They're there. Uh, any PRs that you want to any PRs that you want to throw, either fixes um, or always welcome translations, then we, you know, I think we should definitely have a chat about it as well because um, translations, although they're amazing, there's also quite a lot of upkeep with, trans with translations as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, this is, a, this is a project that like, yeah, it's our job to maintain these docs, but then obviously we also welcome all community input on doing this as well. And I think this is maybe something the the developer portal that's going to come next year. I think that's also like something that we maybe has like more scope, even more scope in terms of like seeing what people actually want to see there, you know, like and uh, using this as a hub to kind of um, to be a platform for all of the all of the cool stuff that like people in the community are already doing. Yeah, I think that we're just we're not trying to be stingy with the documentation. Like even when I make my videos and I see the comments in on YouTube, um, I see a couple of things there that people want to see. Um Matt said it already, like it's open source. So like of course chuck in a PR, we're gonna look at it and probably make a decision to add that to the docs. Um but it's nice that we're not just so narrow minded with, hey, we wanna add this, we don't we haven't really listened to the community, but we're going to add this. But like, I think we want to listen to the community and get it from all different angles in terms of making, you know, the documentation, this developer portal, like a beacon of knowledge for the community. Guys, actually, I missed, I missed the uh, two questions. Um, so can can we give give some quick answer to these? I'm, I'm I will be I will feel bad answering all the questions and it uh, and then not answering these two. So. Vinlex Notes asks, um, how does NIM work if receiving application doesn't use the mixnet? Uh, does it reduce privacy? Uh, if the receiving application doesn't, that, the, the, the question doesn't, that doesn't make sense. Uh, to know, to want to, if I want to send a, do you mean like if you try and send a, a message to, I'm not, I'm not actually, now I'm thinking about it, I'm not actually fully sure I understand the question. Could you, do you mean like if you want to use, you want to use NIM to send a message on Telegram to someone who's not using NIM with their Telegram? Is that what you mean? I think something like that. Yeah. But he's, he's uh, typing. So let's wait. For yeah. That I can see that they're typing. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Right. So this is actually, this, this doesn't, this makes no difference. Right. Because, um, you know, because this uh, Telegram, for instance, is not peer-to-peer, -peer, right? Telegram has message servers. So um, it doesn't affect your privacy at all because all you're doing, the way that you're, you're protecting yourself from uh, signal servers being able to see, oh, this is the IP address and this is the exact time that this person sent a message, right? Um, the fact that you're, you're just sending a message to Telegram's message servers, which says, oh, yeah, post this message in a group. Right or whatever that um, so that that isn't affected. The fact that not everyone's using NIM is not affected at all because of the architecture of what we're doing. Like the mixnet is this kind of the mixnet and the network requester or the service that's basically sending this request to Telegram for you. That's the thing that's kind of shielding all of your metadata from Telegram servers. 
doesn't matter what the content of that message is because the content of that message is like whatever the message you're sending to a group. Do you know what I mean? So with that kind of a server model, uh, like a server architecture, then yeah, Nim is just Nim is protecting you in virtue of the fact that you're using it. Um, but the fact that you could maybe be talking to a group of people who aren't using Nim with Telegram doesn't affect it at all in terms of your security. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cool. Now, the last question, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, I am, I'm not entirely sure whether I understand um, uh, what he means by this. I mean, I understand the words, but I'm not sure how, how this would work. But anyways, I'll still ask it. So uh, Coconut Credentials question. Uh, is my understanding correct that with ZK NIM, um, actually, you can gamify the entirety of user facing of the user user facing ecosystem of NIM. Probably not just that, but let's focus on uh, soon to be paying users for now. Like I'm, I'm not sure how ZK NIM uh, ZK NIMs play into gamification. Yeah, neither do I. Could you um, could you reword? I don't really see how you how gamification is part of it. Yeah, me neither. But he's he's clarifying right now. But until he does, I'm going to uh, read out loud what Jay just Rewards shared with us. Rewards and behaviors. So... Um, I mean, no, not really, right? I mean, if we're talking about paid participants, uh, no, I mean, you're not really gamifying it, right? You're just um, you're just setting up a method by which um, you're setting up a method by which, like users have to kind of essentially use a credential to authenticate um, in some way. And, you know, if we're talking about the, like, using a credential to show that you paid for the mixnet, then that's not really gamification. That's, it's more kind of a, um, it's a, essentially like a private access control layer. Yeah, I, 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 I can see what you're typing. Yeah. But in the meantime, I will just read out what Jaya sent us uh, from from Dave. Um, uh, Dave t uh, told us to uh, to tell the Dev community, tell them quote quote quoting directly, tell them next year is going to be fucking mind blowing. We have some pretty cool stuff in the in the pipeline, and when Dave says says that, you can believe him. So uh, yeah. All right, you know what? Let's. Uh, do you want to jump on stage, Huxian? Just ask that like, so that we don't have to wait for typing and wait. Where are you? There you are. Yeah, hi, thanks. It's slow mode enabled, so I cannot even type yes without waiting six seconds here. <laughs> Thank you guys. Ah, okay. for the... <laughs> Thank you for the amazing answer. So it's it's a bit like a, a further shooting question because what I'm understanding from ZK is that basically you can Kind of identify through identification of individual users, you know, with selective disclosure identities, you can kind of gamify all these paths we would rather like to see that users take. Like just a very uh, easy example, like how we would reward using paste name instead of other, you know, just regular links being pasted on certain other UIs that use name too, for example. But that's just one very weird example I'm giving now. It doesn't make any sense. It might not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I still don't understand. Maybe Max does. I mean, kind of. It's definitely, I mean, that's more of like a by, I suppose you could, I mean, are you talking about like creating a credential that proves that you did something, basically? <laughs> yes, yes. You, you can, kind of like social crediting, but in a very good sense, you know, don't take it the Chinese way, but take it like, you know, like helping community goals succeed and, <laughs> And, and, and like, for example, if, if I can choose between using an application which is entirely, you know, end-to-end -end on the mixnet and even peer-to-peer, -peer, then it's better, I mean, it should be more somehow incentive as recognized than compared to using an application which is going through a service provider that already records your messages by the words, you know. So, like, somehow making these routes for people to take which are more beneficial for the anonymity set and for the overall goal of the project. Okay, we, we can we can discuss this later too. I mean, it's not probably not no. the best 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 minute to start twenty minutes late after the, the hour has passed. But uh, no, 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 it's all so good. Sorry, yeah, I just yeah. I, dro I my connection dropped briefly. I mean, yeah, I think what you're talking about is like um, 
is something that you could do with the credential for sure. Because I mean, I mean, you could, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, yeah, the way that you're kind of describing it, you're basically talking about using a credential as like an anonymized version of like a proof of attendance token, right? Sort if I got that yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, you totally could use it for that. I imagine. But that, yeah. But that, that that's kind of makes all what we talk here about crazy, no? Like if you think about that, what does it mean? Like to gamify all this and to reward certain behaviors and, and not reward certain others that much? It's kind of you know, Well, like I think I, I mean, yeah, I think that is, but I think that's like not that's not a that's not a property of the credentials themselves. I would say that's more like a um that's not yeah. That's not a property of coconut credentials themselves. I wouldn't say because you could completely do it without a coconut credential. And I mean that's like what so much of the kind of crypto, uh, like crypto economic kind of design space, really has been looking at doing right for so long. I mean, I, I, I don't quite follow you there, but I'm not gonna not gonna you know hold up the whole conversation there. But I don't know how you could do that without uh, zk name. I think proof of attendance tokens are like a. A uh, very good example of that, right? Yeah, but the, or, I, I, wanna, I drop I, mining like this. Yeah, but I want to also factor in like, like you know, like uh, other qualitative interactions of like social aspects and like you know, like running a mixed node personally, or like how 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 is your stake being staked across the mixed net if it's being you know used to day trade on Kraken or if it's being put into good use through you know staking into a mixed node or bonding your own mixed node. So there are certain levels of use for the NIM tokens at themselves on the next chain, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But let's, um, maybe, we, maybe we keep it, maybe we take it offline and see if there's yeah, any yeah. Final, yeah. final things that we've got. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, though. Thank you for the uh, opportunity. Of course. To that <laughs> Thanks for the question, man. It's good. All right, folks, I think with that, uh, this was an interesting, I never thought of it this way. So it's it's kind of a, a bit of a mindfuck question. It made me, uh, it threw me off balance completely. And now I, I can't stop thinking about it. But anyways, on that note, I'm going to let everybody go. That includes both our audience and also our amazing DevRel team. And huge thanks for coming on, guys, um, all three of you. And hopefully we'll have uh, many more of these. I think it was really, really useful. So um, uh, let's do maybe... More of these next year? Can we commit to that publicly to our to our dear community? Yeah, cool. Sick. Yeah, sounds I'm good. Done. All right, folks. It was awesome to have you on. the um, The call was recorded. Will be uploaded. I think I'll, I'll just put this one as well to the uh, on the uh, community call um, playlist, or maybe not. I don't know. I'll decide later. But the, but the point is, it was recorded, and I'm gonna make a video uh, out of it, just like uh, just as usual. And just as usual, you can also collect your po up for this event. I believe Pizza J, our wonderful Portuguese speaking community manager, created a po up for this one as well. So you can just go to um, uh, to the uh, claim attendance NFT. Um, um text channel which is one above the the stage that we're currently on and just type there's this uh this gif that um or gif I'm not going into that um that jay is going to share with you momentarily on the channel and that shows you the very easy simple instructions on how to claim your pull up huge thanks for joining everybody hopefully this was useful if you have any uh feedback or questions or suggestions regarding the format or anything else then make sure to let us know and also if you want to tag um uh our guys over here from devrel um, with any questions um, related to, to, to DevRel, then you can you can just do so by using the at uh, DevRel tag. So just do that if you uh, if if you if you're left with any any further questions uh, related to anything that was discussed, make sure to do that. And um, for those um, those many of you from the audience who are also Shipyard Academy participants, hopefully see you very soon in about 36 minutes on this very sta same stage on the uh, Shipyard Academy graduation ceremony. So, excited for that. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye.